Okay, doc. So welcome everyone. Thank you very much for coming along to this deep dive session with Shimon Stein on the Foreman Red Hat Cloud. So as um, as Shimon said, if you have any, the session is informal ish. So if you have any questions, feel free to come off mute and ask if you have any feedback or comments or anything. They're also welcome. Um, if you would prefer, you can also uh, type a question and I will ask it to Shim. And um, I think that is everything for now, Shim. So uh, you are free to start whenever you like. Hey, thanks, Melanie. And uh, so, uh, hi, I'm Shim. I work on uh, on Foreman for quite a while, something like five years. Um, and lately, I am working on a new plugin called Foreman RH Cloud, uh, which is a plugin that I want to talk uh, more about it uh, today. Um, so, uh, about the plugin. Um, what is it? Uh, so it's a plugin that uh, that makes um, cloud .com information uh, available uh, as part of uh, Foreman uh, organic uh, pages. Uh, for those who are familiar with insights, uh, I think it would be a bit uh, easier to understand that. Um, but because basically it's the information that we have on insights, but I'll talk about it uh, later. So um, let's go with that one. So we have basically the plugin consists of two parts. We have one part which is um, the uploader, and the other part is the one that is um, more related to specifically to insights on cloudreader.com, uh, and it's more uh, download oriented. So you have the uploader and the downloader parts. Uh, so the uploader part is responsible for generating and uploading uh, inventory reports from Foreman to the cloud. So basically you have, uh, you will, uh, it will generate a report about all your hosts that are uh, in the system. Uh, and um, and those reports would be uploaded to the uh, Red Hat Cloud Inventory, which is the uh, global place we uh, can show information about it. And the other part is the insights part, the downloader. Uh, this part is actually responsible for downloading information from the cloud and uh, getting it into uh, into form and into uh, these regular screens that you are uh, the regular pages that you are already um, familiar with. So it will give you more information on your host. Basically, it will give you more information on, on your hosts page. So let's talk more about the uploader. First, let's start with how to make it work. So if I choose an organization like this one, which doesn't have a manifest, Catello manifest. So first, let's start with a, with the first a thing. Um, this plugin relies heavily on Catello. So if you are not using Catello, which is our content management, uh, it will not work. And so uh, you have to have Catello installed and being used for this plugin to actually work. Um, so when you go to content subscriptions, you will, this is the screen that basically uh, responsible for um, having subscriptions uh, in, uh, imported into Catello. Uh, first thing that you have to do in Catello use case is to import a manifest. While you do that, you will see a new uh, a new part on the uh, manifest uploading uh, screen, which 
which is actually the main switch to enable or disable the inventory auto upload. This is the uh, upload that I was talking about. Uh, besides that, there are a couple of uh, advanced settings where we will talk about them a bit later. Okay, so uh, I will not upload the manifest currently because I already have it for a different organization. So here you can see I already have a manifest uploaded with the, um, with a, with everything synced up. So um, next thing I wanted to talk about is the scheduled run. So first you can actually see all the information about the uploading on the configure inventory upload page that you can see right now. Um, you can see the same switches already uh, here. So the first and the most interesting thing you can see is the uh, uploader screen. Uh, since you can, you can select all organizations, we are in, this is a kind of card thing. Uh, you can see here that the next run uh, will be is scheduled for in 23 hours. Basically, we're scheduling um, a upload once a day, too, so once in 24 hours. Unfortunately, currently, there is no way to actually select when the uh, upload will occur. Uh, we are working on it, and it will be available um, uh, sooner than later. Uh, it will become as it will be shown as recurring logics for those who are actually interested in that. Um, so the report uh, will be generated and automatically uploaded. You can actually restart the upload if something changes, or I don't know why the system was not able to actually upload the report and. You want either debug the process or you want to uh, upload uh, the uh, upload the report. Right now, there is the restart button uh, that will actually uh, start the re-uploading process. You will see the whole generation uh, output here. just as you can see. Um, once the report is generated, it's uploaded. Uh, since I uh, have selected a disconnected mode for my satellite, just uh, because it's a uh, satellite foreman, and uh, sorry about that, um, because it's my development machine, so uh, I have decided not to upload the reports but I'm just generating them. So you would see here the regular curl command that actually uploads the report, and you will see the result here. Um, another option, that, another thing that you can do is actually to download the report locally to observe what kind of information I am actually generating. Uh, it's a regular tar XZ archive. Let me actually extract it and I will be able to show it. So basically it contains um, two types of files. There is the first metadata JSON, which is kind of metadata that says which other files are uh, present in the report. And the second one is a JSON file that contains all the reports. Let me show you one of those. This is actually a report that I have uh, just downloaded from my machine. So you have the whole, so you have all your hosts. For me, it's only one because it's a development machine. Um, you can see a lot of information about it, the FQDN, the IP addresses, and so on and so on. And so on. There are the CPU flags and the packages. 
and the facts, which are kind of um, kind of important thing for um, for the rest of um, uh, the process. So uh, one of the important, most important facts is this one, the satellite instance ID uh, fact, which actually um, uh, identifies the form and machine that is responsible for this host. So basically it makes uh, the cloud to understand that this machine is managed by this specific uh, form and host. Okay, so um, this is the report I wanted to talk about. Um, let's get back to the inventory upload page. Uh, but, uh, uh, what other options you have here? You can obfuscate your host names, and then instead of FPDNs, you will have hashes uh, for your uh, host names. Uh, you can also obfuscate the IPv4 addresses before you send them, and those would be also obfuscated. Those two features actually come from Insights Client. Uh, I will talk about it a bit more uh, later. And there was a request to actually uh, enable exclusion of installed packages. So here you can see that I am reporting all the installed packages on that machine, and you can actually uh, stop the system from doing that, and the whole node will be uh, missing from the report. Of course, the less information you share with uh, Reddit, the less uh, value Reddit will be able to actually give you back. Um, okay, uh, those two buttons I'll talk about later. Now let's uh, move on to the second part of our uh, plugin, which is the insights part. Um, so let's start first with uh, with a general idea of it. Uh, so we have recommendations. Um, what is a let's show it just for a brief moment. We can see a recommendation here. Um, basically, a recommendation is some. Uh, is some is a result of a rule engine running on all the data that is available to Reddit about your host, and it generates some sort of a recommendation um, uh, based on that uh, information. For example, here you can see that uh, there is a, a, a chance that things would go wrong if there is Postgres database on that specific kernel. Um, the, same, um, the same about everything uh, else here. So those are the recommendations. Uh, besides that, Reddit also um, suggests remediation scripts uh, to remediate those issues. All this done. All this is done by Insights Client, which is a, a program that runs on the server, and uh, this tool is actually also reporting the information uh, to Red Hat. So it's just another type of reports that are uh, generated uh, about the server and are uh, uploaded to uh, Red Hat. Uh, this time uh, it's rule centric. So basically it gathers all the information that is relevant to all the rules. Uh, and this information would be later on processed by the rules and, uh, and the recommendations would be generated. Now, in order to have this uh, screen working, 
and there is one essential part that you have to do. Uh, let me show you what happens on a system where, uh, on a fresh system. So if you, I have one fresh system in hand for that. So that's the same screen, basically uh, configure insights. You will be welcomed with this screen, which asks you to go to accessreddit.com and obtain a Reddit Cloud token. Um, you can create a token. I will not do that because it will actually rewrite my own token that is already generated. Uh, but once you have um, set this token up, you will be able to access uh, this screen. Um, uh, those are the recommendations about the machines that I have installed on uh, uh, in this uh, form and instance. Um, as with the report, we can, we can allow automatic synchronizations, uh, synchronization of, uh, of uh, those uh, uh, rules. So basically what will happen is that once a day, the system will ping uh, cloudreader.com and download from there all the rules that are relevant to, uh, the, ser uh, to the servers that are managed by this satellite. Uh, how do I? Uh, how does the system know that servers are managed by uh, this satellite? Using the uh, using that uh, fact that we already seen here, the satellite instance ID. So there is a switch. Basically, you can either synchronize it automatically, or you can uh, start recommendation sync. Uh, manually from this button. Now, um, as I have said earlier, the recommendations are uh, integrated into the regular um, uh, form and uh, pages. So you can see here that this machine uh, has uh, eight new recommendations uh, from Reddit Cloud. So this column is actually added by RH Cloud plugin. Uh, a click on the recommendations will actually bring you into the uh, host details page where you could see the recommendations. You can see much more information here about those recommendations. Um, as you can see, it's just another tab on the uh, on the host details page. Now, so now uh, once you have the uh, recommendations actually uh, available to you, and the next step would be try to remediate at least some of them. So you can either press a recommendations button on a, on the host details page, and then you will actually have the same configure insert page with a filter already set up, or you can go to configure insights and create whatever filter you want, filter the issues, select them, and press the remediate button. It will uh, start, uh, this is the first step into the remediation process. One thing I want to uh, mention before it, the remediate button currently is a lab feature. So you have to enable uh, lab features in the uh, settings uh, page. Uh, so one, so let's go on with the remediation uh, use case. Once you click the remediation button, you will 
uh, be presented with a list of all the uh, recommendations that uh, you have selected. And if a recommendation has multiple resolution, uh, you will also see it here. You can select which type of resolution you want to actually apply to your uh, machine. A click on the remediate button here will redirect you to the familiar job invocation screen uh, where everything is already preset. So you can see the, the actually the IDs and the resolutions that, uh, that were selected by you and the search query is already uh, pre-configured, the job template, everything basically is pre-configured. So the only interesting thing uh, about it for, uh, for you would be the schedule and the schedule of this execution. So either uh, execute it right now or uh, schedule it for future execution. The, the, those are the valid options. Once I click the submit button, it will start the remote execution script. Um, I prefer not to do it because, uh, again, it will mess up with my um, development environment. OK, so let's go back to inventory upload page. Here you can see the configure cloud connector button. What is a cloud connector and what does this button do? So uh, Reddit also uh, uh, has the option of doing everything that we have current that I have currently presented, uh, doing it from the cloud side. Uh, so basically, you will see the, your inventory on the cloud side, and you will uh, be able to uh, select an, a, a set of recommendations, and, uh, and you will be able to actually press a remediate button on the cloud side, and it will actually uh, ask your local foreman instance to run uh, those remediation scripts. This is done by and the cloud connector. Again, it uh, relies on the satellite instance ID tag, meaning uh, that the machine is managed by the specific satellite instance. And since it's a, a separate service that has to run on satellite machine, we have added the option to configure cloud connector uh, in a more easier easier in, in an easier way uh, using this configure cloud connector button so once you have pressed the button you will uh, have a foreman generate a, spe a specific token for for the cloud connector and it will actually ensure that cloud connector is installed for um, with the um, token that it has generated in the earlier step. So this is the cloud connector. Um, another cool feature that we have is the inventory. So now I'll talk a bit about monitoring that, the, that everything is actually running and everything works. So you have the sync inventory status button here. Uh, again, the inventory status is synced automatically uh, once a day. What does it do is actually adding a new status to your host. You can see it here. So you can see here. Uh, let's open the host. It will be a bit more. And present. So you can see here the inside status and the configuration. Okay. Um, let's see if it will work for us right now. Um, 
I'm relying on demo gods, so either it will work or it doesn't. Yep, the token is not correct here currently. Okay, so uh, what you should be able to see is a new status on your host, which is in the inventory status. Uh, you would see, um, let's see if I can find it. Another machine. Okay, I can't find that status currently, but you would see the inventory upload status that will say that the machine is either reporting to the cloud uh, and returning the result or a you will see a warning a message that says that the, this host is not uh, present on the cloud, meaning that the reports are not uh, generated for that uh, uh, for that host, or something happened to report and it is not being able uh, being able to be processed on the cloud side. Another status that uh, that is present in the system is the insights status. Uh, this status is actually uh, indicates if the insights client that we are and uh, that we have talked about the the uh, the tool that actually generates reports about the recommendations. Uh, since the tool actually reports through satellite through Foreman uh, to the cloud, we are able to uh, know uh, when the host is actually uh, reporting as it is expected or it doesn't. So in this case, it's reporting. Um, if we go to another host, we will see that there are a couple of hosts that are set as reporting, not set. There is, yeah, here it is. Uh, this one is not reporting. All of them are not reporting, let's see. Yeah. The not set by re registration actually means that the host um, is not, a, the insights client it was not installed by Foreman. So when you go to the edit page, you could add an option to, so once you deploy your host, yeah, sorry about that. Um, you can deploy your host with the a host registration insights parameter set to true. And what it will do, it will actually deploy the host with a, the insights client already pre-installed and working on that machine. So that would be the host inside status. Um, if we go to monitor tasks, we will see new tasks available there. You will, we will see the inventory uh, status sync task and the recommendations sync tasks available here. So this is the generate all reports job. This, this job is actually a responsible for uh, generating reports for all organizations. And yes, I have a cat. Um, and the inside scheduled thing is the uh, task that actually uh, synchronizes syncs the uh, recommendations from the cloud back to the foreman. Um, those are the main uh, tasks that are relevant to um, uh, to the process, and those are actually um, so. Look for those tasks and see if they uh, are not working correctly. In case uh, uh, something happens, for example, here 
uh, you can see uh, paused and errored uh, task. Enable to authenticate here, we can see it there and that we did, um, that happened to us a couple of uh, minutes before. Uh, again, the um, the remediations would uh, appear just as regular jobs, so they will would be available on the jobs and job in locations um, screen. Um, that's what I had in mind about uh, about this plugin. Um, now I'll uh, leave the microphone open to uh, questions if someone has something or want me to go over some uh, additional things that this plugin, uh, about this plugin. I think there there is a question in the Q and A section oh, uh, from Jamir. Yeah, and registering really registering satellite host with insights makes recommendations for that host disappear from satellite. Can you explain why this happens and if there's a, any way we can avoid fix this? Um, it's a good question. Um, so let me uh, rephrase it. Uh, Insights client has an option to force register. Um, to force register. What happens is that uh, it will regenerate a new Insights uh, ID for, for that host. Um, effectively, it will create a, another record uh, on the uh, cloud side, on the uh, cloud inventory side. And the recommendations would be uh, placed on uh, on the probably on the new instance, uh, on the new um, uh, on the new record for that host. What can be done about it? Uh, theoretically, it's deduplication. There is a lot of work going on uh, around the deduplication algorithms and how can we understand that essentially those two records represent the same host, hence they should be kind of merged or there shouldn't be a, a duplicate record for them. Um, so um, I suppose the way to avoid uh, avoid this issue is not to re-register your host using a Insights client uh, because it will mess up with the IDs. Um, I think it's the same recommendation actually for a subscription manager uh, registrations too. So uh, I think that would be the best option to avoid it. Uh, as to the fix, uh, I suppose the fix would be on the cloud side. Uh, again, it would be some sort of a deduplication algorithm that will not allow uh, duplicate records. I hope that answered your question, Jamir. Yeah, yeah, it does. Awesome. Anything else I can I can tell you? So, um, if there are uh, no more questions, uh, I suppose we can uh, wrap this session up. Oh, hi, Kat. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. It's um, it's it's inevitable. So if you so if you 
don't have any other questions and if you think of something later just feel free to reach out to shim directly or write on the community and we'll get back to you with some answers so just one more moment if anyone has anything else If okay, if not, then so Shim, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today about the plugin, and thank you all for coming along. And I'll upload this to YouTube and put a link um, in the various places where I'd advertise this. And if there's anything else, you can um, if there's anything else, you can get in touch with us. So thank you all very much, and see you next time.